Good evening, everyone. It's about that time for us to go into God's Word. And I'm thankful for those of you that were praying for me and with me as I went to Virginia for, you know, there was a, a death, and I, I felt the need to be there. And, uh, but I'm back back safely and thank you for your prayers Father God is again I come to you in the name of Jesus thanking you Lord always for an opportunity to share your word forgive me Lord for all my sins all my transgressions thoughts I might have entertained and Something that I might, might have done that I'm not aware of at this time, but I want to be cleansed from all unrighteousness. Bless the people that are listening, are, are sharing in this study, preparing for the kingdom, because I feel like you're soon to come, but you're revealing yourself to us through nature. You had an earthquake in South Carolina today and fires in California and Arizona, heat waves and through the pestilence that people call a COVID. And Lord, that's your voice. And I'm I'm listening. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us for our shortcomings. And as I go into your word, I always ask you, take me out of self hide me behind the cross of Calvary don't ever let my flesh be on parade let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight O Lord my strength and my redeemer amen good evening my favorite deacon yeah I said it so those of you that are listening don't, don't, don't get mad I said my favorite you, you can have all the favorites you want and a man studies the scripture and teaches it. You know, he, I'm going to be in this corner. We are, I'm grateful, as I said, I'm grateful to be back in Rock Hill. I've had a long and tiring weekend, but God is still good. Uh, Nadine, you let somebody beat you, beat you this time, you're number two. <laughs> but I'm glad to have you. Uh, I want you to prepare uh, your, your Bibles. We're going to be in the 21st as well as the 22nd chapter of Revelation because as you know, when the Bible was written, it was a scroll. There are no, there are no divisions. And uh, these chapters actually coincide uh, together. They, they, they come together. And, and we'll also be looking at something that was said in... Uh, uh, Isaiah and Ezekiel concerning the new heaven, the new earth, and so forth. But I don't want, I don't want to get ahead of myself. So the first thing I'm going to do is read a few verses from chapter 21. And we're just going to read the four, the four verses for right now. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. 
and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. There is so much in this chapter. Hey, Jay, I missed you today. Mr. Loretta, good to see you. With your faithful self, you and Nadine, my, my brother Ed, thank you. Chapter 21, I, I want you to get this in your spirit. It introduces the eternal future. The eternal future that's planned by God and the ultimate purpose of God for man. Let me say that again. It introduces the eternal future planned by God and the ultimate purpose of God for man, for me and you. Now, we have eternal life right now. Those that have, accept, that have accepted Jesus Christ and the free pardon of their sins. The moment that you accepted him, he gave you eternal life at that moment. And we are working out our soul salvation with fear and trembling. We want to, at least I do, I want to have I want to have a a place, a good place in the kingdom. Yes, Sister Cynthia, thank you for joining me. It me and you got out to talk about that woman. We have we have a future. We we are spirit people now. In in a in a body. This might sound strange, but you have never seen Robert Brown in your life. You will see me as when you and I reach that eternal home. Because right now we're going from glory to glory. And we will have a glorified body. We are spirit. We are spirit. We are spirit man. We're dwelling in a house. So, but let's, let's get back to this Revelation 21. It, it says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Now, we're going to find seven things in chapter, between chapters 21 and 22, that are new things. There are new things that, that are, are introduced to us. In this chapter 21, the first verse, what do you see? You see two things, a new heaven and a new earth. A new heaven and a new earth. In the second verse, you see a new Jerusalem. In the fifth verse, you see new things. He makes all things new. And when we go to chapter 22, in verses 1 through 5, we see a new paradise and in 22 verse 3 we see a new place for God's throne <laughs> a new place for God's throne and and finally and finally for the seventh thing in in 22 and 5 there's going to be a new source of light new things now what the destruction 
of the earth. Believe it or not, when you let's, let's go back, let's go back to chapter nineteen. I believe it's nineteen. Uh. No, yeah, no, I'm sorry, it's twenty. Look at look at uh, the twentieth chapter and the eleventh verse. When, after the devil that deceived the world, the world was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone and torment day and night forever, in verse 11, after all that happened, you see a great white throne. You see that? A great white throne. And him that sat on it. And as soon as he came out, what happened to the earth and the heavens? Read it. What happened to the earth and the heaven? They fled away from the face of God and there was found no place for them. No place. Hey, Pastor. Pastor Walter, good to see you. There was found no place for them. So it makes sense when we go to... Uh, Revelation chapter 21 if there's no place for them what what was necessary for God to do he he had to recreate again just like I when I I'm teaching Genesis on Friday and I already told you this point the Hebrew says in a beginning God created the heaven singular and the earth now, when you create something, it is visible, correct? You see it. It has substance. But the earth became without shape and void, gone. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and there was darkness upon the face of the deep, or the abysses. Satan was not the anointed cherub that covered the mercy seat in heaven, but he was the anointed cherub that covered the earth from the mount of God. He had people under him, but he wasn't satisfied with his position. And he said, I'm going to ascend above the clouds. If you're going to ascend above the clouds, you've got to be on earth. And I will... He's going to exalt himself above the throne of God, above the stars of God. And I will be like the Most High. So when he tried that, when he came up, everything he touched was darkness. It became darkness. And the, there, was, there was no light, so God had to recreate. In verse 2, And the earth was without shape and void, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. And the first thing he said was what? Let there be light. Let there be light. It was a recreation. He had to do a recreation after Adam sinned and to the point where it, it, it God said, I'm so tired of man. Was, I'm sorry I made the man. He wasn't talking about all, Adam. Adam. Adam caused all the sin on the face of this earth. So what did God do? He, he found one individual that didn't that wasn't messed up with Adam's genes. That's talking about Adam. Uh, Noah was pure in his generations. He was perfect in his generations, and he used Noah to reestablish the earth again. Everybody was wiped out. So now, let's go on. Go on. Now, when after we are caught up in that fourth chapter of of uh, Revelation, when that door was open in heaven, the church is gone. This church is raptured. We're in the presence of God. We are protected. When, when this is happening right now, we are safe. We are in what I call the Rock of Ages. Rock of Ages is cleft for me. Let me 
hide myself in thee. So when that great white throne came out in in twenty and eleven, the the earth and the heaven fled from his the face of God. So it so it made it necessary for what? A new heaven. And he so said, I saw a new heaven, singular, not heaven, a new heaven and a new earth. For, so what happened to the first heaven and the first? They passed away, as we saw in chapter 20. It passed away. And there was no more sea. There's no more sea because how much water is on the earth it's actually more, more, more water than there is earth. That's the reason you have islands and so forth. That's the reason you have Niagara Falls. So there was no more sea. He is creating the earth without seas. It's not needed. Because we'll find that living waters will flow from the throne of God. There was no more sea. Now, why will God destroy the heaven? I didn't say the heavens. I said the heaven, not where, not where God is. The heaven. What is he talking about? Well, he's talking about the atmospheric heaven. That's where... <laughs> That's where Satan's headquarters is, the atmospheric heaven. It's the abode of Satan. And in, in Ephesians 6 and 12, it indicates that Satan is the god of this world, or, or the god of this earth, because he's, he's, he, he stole it from Adam. And his emissaries are performing spiritual wickedness in high places. When he failed, there, there, were, there were sons of God, there were angels that fell with him, and they cannot operate unless they are in a body. They no longer had celestial bodies, but they became disembodied spirits waiting for volunteers. We call them demons, and, and, and there was over a thousand that came into a man at one time. You remember when, when uh, Jesus asked the man his name that he's going to cast and what did he say? Legion because we are many. So what I'm saying is more than one demonic spirit can operate in a person at one time. But they need a volunteer. So God is going to destroy the the heaven which is the abode the heaven which is the abode of Satan and his emissary because they are per performing spiritual wickedness in high places so after the final rebellion of Satan God is going to to not only destroy the heaven but the earth which is has been cursed the earth has been cursed by Satan's evil. I'm trying to go slowly. I don't want Pam talking to me. Now, the new heaven. The new heaven and the new earth. I told you two-thirds of this earth's surface is covered with water. And the remaining one-third is... Uh, <laughs> It's useless too because it's, it's got what? Mountains and deserts. Only a small portion of the earth's surface is habitable that you can live in. Just a small part of it. So the, the heaven and the earth fled away at the presence of God. You understand that from the 20th chapter. There has, there has to be a re 
creation. That's what, and John saw this happen. I saw a new heaven, the abode of Satan, and a new earth where he has caused corruption and a curse. The first heaven, the first earth had passed away. And they found no place for them in, in, in chapter 20. And there was no more sea. Now, here we go. What else did John see in, in verse 2? He did, did, didn't just call it New Jerusalem. He called it a holy, the holy city. What's the name of the holy city? New Jerusalem. Where, where was New Jerusalem? Already in heaven. Already made up. New Jerusalem was in heaven. The city was in heaven. And, and stay with me on, on the city because there's more to it than, than just calling it a city. When John was on, the, on that mountain, he saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from, where's God? In heaven. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Didn't we go over that uh, earlier with, when uh, he's going to show you, show you the, the, the bride, the, the lamb's wife? And, but but, but we'll, 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 we'll get back to that. But notice how that city is adorned. As a bride adorned for her husband. She's not a wife yet. A bride is not a wife. Understand that. Right now the church is not the bride of Christ. The Apostle Paul told you exactly what we're... I've espoused you as, as virgin. As, 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 a, as a... You're engaged to him. Expoused. Like Mary and, jo Mary and Joseph, they were espoused. They were not married. Right now we are not married to him. We are engaged to him. After we are engaged to him in glory, we be will become the bride. And the next thing, the bride is not a wife until there is a ceremony. So a ceremony is getting ready to happen right here. Prepared as a bride adorned for a husband. I didn't see Miss Pam in 1980, who was my fiance. When she walked through the door, she was my bride. And, and after the pastor officiated, she became what? My wife. So this is not complete yet. It's not complete. Now, the... Why was the earth made new? Why was the earth made new? Because the holy city is in heaven and it's, it's, it's prepared as a virtuous woman for the day of her marriage. A bride is not a wife. Is getting ready to happen, and and God has been been preparing this city for over two thousand years. Now, another another thing, I heard a voice, verse three. Oh, I'm sorry, a great voice. When we read God's word, let's let, let's get all of it. I I apologize for that one. I. I heard a great voice. Where was it? Out of heaven. See, John wasn't in heaven. He was not in heaven. He was still on earth look, having a vision and because he had to be on earth if he saw a, a new heaven and a new earth coming down. Boy, I'm so glad to see you. <laughs> she knows who I'm talking to. That's what that woman, Miss Doris, we've done we've we've done a whole lot of praying, haven't we? I heard a great voice out of heaven, 
and please let's get let's get this straight. Behold, the tabernacle of God is underlined the word with. It's not saying in. Right now we are the we are the tabernacle. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The, Ho the Holy Spirit is living in us. That tabernacle is in us. We represent actually the, the, the Ark of the Covenant because in us is the Word. In us is Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So inside this clay, I told you you've never seen me. Inside this clay, you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. How do I know that? Because in Jesus dwells the fullness of the Godhead in one body. So inside you is a tabernacle, is a temple. But that's not what this is saying. What is the what's, where is God going to put the tabernacle now? With men. Like Jesus was with the disciples, he wasn't in them. Because he had not yet ascended to the Father. When he ascended to the Father, he appeared behind closed doors and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Before Pentecost, Pentecostals, behind closed doors, and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And he, <sighs> so when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they already had the Holy Spirit in them, but the but Spirit of God came upon them, upon them, and connected with what was in them. But here God is saying, the tabernacle of God from th that point on, is with men and where is he going to dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God isn't that the, the promise in Isaiah for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given the government shall be upon his shoulder and his, and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And what was his name going to be called? Emmanuel, meaning what? God with us. Did I talk too fast? Just send up those signs. I don't want I don't pay I'm sending down no thunderbolts. Shall be his people and God him God himself. God him self shall be with them and be their God. Well, wait a minute. The Holy City is coming down to earth. And God's going to be with them on earth. We need to get this thing straight about heaven. Heaven is going to be a temporary place for us. We shall reign with him on earth. Thy kingdom coming down to earth. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. As it is in heaven right now. He's coming down to earth. His throne is going to be on earth. We can't reign with him if he's in one place and we're in another. He cannot be king of kings unless he's around the kings on the earth. He cannot be lord of lords unless he's around the lords on the earth. I know this might be a little new to some of you. Because when we all get to heaven, what well, a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all... See, the rejoicing will be on earth. The rejoicing will be on earth. And no, John didn't walk in Jerusalem. I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I want to be ready to walk in Jerusalem just like John. He didn't walk in Jerusalem. Jerusalem came down to the earth. He saw it. He described it, which we'll see. So, well, I'm saying let's erase some of this stuff that's in our mind and see what the Word of God has to say. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Behold, 
the tabernacle of God is with men. Where are the men? On earth. And he's going to dwell with him. With them. D dwell with them where? Where they are on earth. And they shall be his people. Where? On earth. And God himself will be with them. Where? On earth. And be their God. And for those that are gone through that 1,000 year reign that had escaped the, 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 the mark and the number of, of the beasts that were tormented, what's he going to do? He, he, didn't say our, he didn't say our eyes. Read that. This is, this is for those. See, we are already, we're already sealed. We're already caught up. We ain't crying. What we got to cry for? We are with him in the air. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death because some of these folk are being resurrected. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall be any more pain for the former things have passed away. You're not going to remember that stuff. If we could remember that stuff, and if those that are in that 1,000 year reign of Christ could remember that, that wouldn't be heavenly. That'd be hell. So the former things are not remembered. Just like with us, when we see Jesus, we're not going to remember our relatives if, if they didn't make it. It wouldn't be heaven. The former things will not be remembered. And how do I know that? Look, look at verse 5. What's he going to do? And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. All things. And he, and he paused right there to, to told John to write what, what was just said? The keys on the keys on the He told John to, pop, to hit pause. John was a secretary. John didn't. John didn't think up Revelation. He was just the scribe, writing. So he said, "I make all things new." And he said to me, "Write, write what I just said. For what I just told you, these words are true and faithful." That could write, remind me of something. Uh, hold your point. Hold your finger on that page and go to Second Corinthians five and seventeen. Second Corinthians five and seventeen. I'm I'm moving slowly too. He said, "Behold, I make." All things new. That includes you. Already done. What does Second Corinthians five and seventeen say? Are, are you in? Let, no, first thing I want. Are you in Christ? And Christ in you? Well, what did He say has happened to you? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature or a new creation all things are passed away behold all things become new you don't remember that garbage you're new you're a new creation in Christ Jesus now go back go back to a revelation 21 and 5 and what did he say he's going to he's going to do the same thing in a different way because these folk that that uh, that uh, in the kingdom during the 1,000 year reign of Christ, they didn't experience what we experienced. So what does, what does he do? What does he do? He says the same, the same thing in verse 5. He that said on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he told John, Okay, I'm going to slow down. You write that. For these words are true and faithful. Now, 
I might have told y'all. Maybe in another study, maybe at, at a church. We totally misunderstand what Jesus meant when he said it is finished. The, the dying was finished, but the job wasn't finished. He said the, the, the same thing in John 17 when he prayed. He told the Lord, I have finished the work you called me to do. Finished at that point. But the work was incomplete. He wasn't finished. He, wasn't, he was not finished. But look at what he says. What does he say in, in uh, verse 6? Isn't finished and done the same thing as done? Everything in Revelation up to this point is finished. He's getting ready to go and do something else. It's finished up to that point. He said to me, it is finished. It's done. No, he tell, no, John, right now, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. He's talking about those that came up through that tribulation period. They, they did good. They, 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 they. Up to this point, they're, 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 in, they're, they're getting ready to go into, into the kingdom on, in a new earth. They said, I, I make all things new. It's, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. And I'm going to drink freely. This water. He is the life. That water of life he's talking about is, is, is himself. Now, they still had something to do during those at 1,000 doing, doing, doing after now well Satan Satan's going it, 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 the 1,000 year reign is 1,000 years is over because Satan Satan was loose for a while and then cast into the lake but he's telling them what's this life is now he that overcometh shall inherit all things when you've got God you've got all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son. Okay, so 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 where are we? Where are we? Sons of God. Sons of God. Right now we are the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but he's shown us. All things new. All things new. For, hit for the sons. But there's another side to the picture. And I want you to understand. <laughs> that this isn't a good thing. But is a conjunction. But... The fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake <clears throat> that burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That list is one that you don't want to be on because it has been erased from the book of life. The fearful and unbelieving fearful to give your life to Christ and get that perfect love that casts out all fear 
God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, which is dunamis, where you get the word dynamite, of power and love, which is agape, and a sound mind. If you don't have that, you're one of the fearful and unbelieving. Didn't believe his word. Didn't want to become a new creature because if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. And the abominable, the abominations, that, that's so much of that is happening right now. Man lying with mankind is an abomination. Woman lying with woman is an abomination. Change in God's life, transgender, abomination. I'm telling you this because I, I, I love you. A, a lot do not realize that, that, that it's wrong. It's an abomination. And murderers. He that hateth his brother is a murderer. Hate is, is murder. And whoremongers. You got him in the pulpit. You got him in the choir. You got him on, on the deacon ministry. There is no deacon board. There are no boards. Maybe a board of education. Whoremongers. Going with somebody else's wife, going with somebody else's husband. That's sin. It's sin. Whoremongers. Sorcerers working witchcraft. And rebellion is the same as witchcraft. You're rebellious. You're a sorcerer. Witchcraft. Idolaters. You worshiping anything, you, you loving anything or anybody more than you love God, that's idolatry. Money is not the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil because you have made it your God. And all liars, he didn't leave, he didn't leave not one out because if you are a liar, Satan is your daddy because he was a liar from the beginning. And I told you, just like there are degrees of rewards, there are degrees of punishment. Notice it says, shall have their part in the lake, which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. They have their part. You don't have to be lost. But, I'm, but, but let me warn you, sin is tasty. You like it. And for you, Holy and that folk talking about I lived a miserable life of sin. I didn't. I enjoyed what I'm doing and and you know, I, I'm not proud of it, but okay. I had four or five women at one time. Yeah, I thought I was this and that, enjoying myself. But now that I've got daughters, I don't appreciate the man come to my house. That, you know, because is that rascal going to be like me in that state? But I enjoyed it. I enjoyed smoking them Jamaican jumping weeds. And I was a whole lot better than these, these folk. I never burnt my fingers one time. I had sisters that had hairpins. I didn't buy no roach clip. Now you know I ain't lying. Sin is tasty. It's lustful. We've got to lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets us. Because there, there are those in the church that don't have the church in them because we are the church. And we're going to give an account for the deeds that's done in this body whether they're good or bad. We're going to give an account. So the overcomers I overcame that. Preaching and teaching 
is something I did not want to do. I don't like a big crowd right now. But I, but I, but I got to deal with it. I enjoyed what I was doing. Went to the Marine Corps in 1968. Called myself running from God. I was another Jonah. Finally, I quit doing that crazy stuff and and and, and <laughs> preached my first sermon in 72, but I was called in 68. I was enjoying what I was doing. I was hypocritical. I gave my life to the Lord in 1959 when Bishop Eugene Clark preached a sermon that when I was 12 years old, who's on the Lord's side? And I didn't know what was going on, but the next thing I knew, I was standing in front of him. Accepting Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord at 12 years old. And, and some crazy folk in the church, when I made a mistake, told me, well, you ain't saved no more. I said, what? I didn't understand that you cannot lose your salvation, but you can be chastised. Unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and present you faultless before the Father. I couldn't understand. Even when I was out there chasing women, some chasing me, I wasn't happy, but I was enjoying it. Sin is tasty. But there is a place for all of this. If you are not an overcomer, Verse 8 is a bad place to be because that you know, hell is pre was prepared for the devil and his angels. If you're with him, you're one of his angels. I know that's hard. I know that's hard, but the I have an assignment from God. And I might lose friends in the process, but I love you enough to tell you the truth. All have sinned that come short of the glory of God. And you can't tell, tell people, well, you can't judge me, you ain't God. Yeah, we can judge you. According to 1 Corinthians, the, the second chapter, because once we gain that wisdom, we, we, have, <laughs> we, we have the authority from God himself to judge because we have discernment and the mind of Christ. So, so what I'm saying is, we can't sin and say, "Well, you're not my judge." Let me, let me, let me give you something from God's word. Shall we continue in sin? The grace may abound. God forbid. God get tired after a while, and give you over to a reprobate mind. And you do the things that are not convenient and won't even bother you. Because sin is tasty. Lust is tasty. I'm through with that. Now, you remember those angels we was dealing with with the plagues? Look at verse 9. And there came un unto me one, just one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues. And he talked with me saying, come up hither. Come here. Come here. I'm going to show you the bride, the lamb's wife. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Go back to verse 2. I, John, saw the holy city in New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Okay, now, when he was carried away, he said, she said, verse 9, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. What bride, what wife was he shown? You read verse 10. I'm going to wait about, about 10 seconds. You read verse 10. What was he shown? Verse 
exactly the bride the, that's become a wife is the holy city that has all of us in it. Every true child of God is within that city. We have now gone from being engaged to him to the bride and now we married. We married to him. And he carried me away in spirit, not to heaven. Please get this right. You don't walk in Jerusalem just like John. And he carried me away in... There's no... Well, this King James says in the spirit, but it's in spirit. He was in spirit, like it was on the Lord's day. To a great and what? High mountain, not to heaven. And he showed me the great city, the whole of Jerusalem, where? Descending out of heaven from God. I told you that heaven is a temporary place for the children of God. After we get married to him, we're going on a honeymoon to the earth. <laughs> it came down from God out of heaven. See, we reside with him. We go to the marriage supper of the Lamb and eat with him. There will be a great coronation where we crown him as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's no longer the, the, the Prince, the Messiah. He's now King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Right now, he is not King of Kings. He's the Prince. He's the Prince. But when he comes, he'll be King of Kings, Lord of Lords. He cannot do that until we're there. If, if, if he can, let's, 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 let's erase the song we sing. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Angels in prostate fall. Prostrate. Prostate. One or the other. Bring forth the royal diadem, crown, and crown him Lord of all. We're going to do that. We're going to be with him. He's, he's not just going to... And, and and actually, you know, he ain't gonna have on a whole lot of crowns, but but uh, you know, just keep in mind that some of these things are are, are literal and, and some are not. Okay, but what comes down from heaven? Us to reign on earth. And what do you see about that city? What does that city have? The glory of God. We are His glory. We are His workmanship. Created into good, good works. We are His glory. We have gone from glory to glory. And her light. I don't know if I'm going to have time now to, to even deal with all this. The light. <laughs> was like a stone most precious. Even a jasper stone, clear as crystal. A jasper stone, clear as crystal. It's like clear grass, clear, blah, 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 clear glass with a gold cast to it. Oh my God, my God. Clear as, hmm. Y'all help me. I'm trying. I'm trying not to preach. That the hope, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for He has anointed me to do this thing. Oh my God, my God. Mm. And had a wall, a wall, one wall, great and high. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk. And had 12 gates. And the, at the gates, 12 angels. And names written thereof, their own. On those gates are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. See, we just read that just like, just like, you know, there's a purpose. 
go with me to as it no Ezekiel forty eight. I'm gonna name a specs. Ezekiel forty eight. I want to show you what we miss by not going back to the Old Testament. The 48th chapter. Uh, and let's start with the 30th verse. And these are the goings out of the city on the north side. 4,500 exits. 4,500 exits go out through the gates. And, and, and notice that the gates of the city shall be after the names of the 12 tribes of Israel, three gates northward, one gate of Reuben, one gate, gate of Judah, and one gate of Levi. If it's, if it's 40, wow, well, 4,500 foot. 40, 4,500 exits, which means at each exit, there are 15,000. 15,000 exits at each gate. At three gates, it's 45,000. And the gates of the city should be named after these folk. And on the east side, it's the same thing that's happening. 4,500. Three gates. One gate, Joseph, Benjamin, and Dan. Three gates. One gate, Joseph, Benjamin, and Dan. Do you realize how big those gates got to be? The south side, 4,500 measures. And three gates. One gate of Simeon, one gate of Ishka, one gate of Zebulun. West side, 4,500 with their three gates. One gate of Gad, one of Asher, that's Moses' son, and, and Nephilim. Ugh. Did you realize? Now the wall, the wall is tall, is taller than the gates. Now, <laughs> The entrance, the entrances would be for, open for God's people to have access to the city. Forty-five hundred on each side at a, at one time. Can you imagine? Eighteen thousand coming together from all sides. Large enough of them just come on in. Oh. Twelve entrances. And the name of the twelve tribes. So, so, so Israel's going to have access. Twelve foundations. This thing, it, it, it just... Have we really thought about the city... Four square. Four square. I won't. Okay. Okay. Uh, 21 verses 12 through 21. It talks about the wall. It will be exclusive. And it's not for protection because... They, we ain't gonna have no enemies. Twelve gates at the gates. Twelve angels names 
names written on the gate, names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Twelve. Now let's see. I read something from a Bible scholar. And he said the city itself was stretched from about the eastern seaboard of the United States to the Mississippi River just on one side and from the Canadian border to the Gulf of Mexico on the other. And in addition to the length and the breadth, the city will be the same height. Uh, the elevation, the height of it, is about 1,500 miles. Y'all just thought it was a regular little old city coming down. 1,500 miles. And it's square. It's square. The length, the width, the height, 1,500 miles. Miles. Straight up. Straight out. Left. Right. Oh, so. Now. The wall of the city. Verse 14. Had twelve foundations and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. You know who they are. We, we read about them. And that angel that talked with John in verse 15 had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates and the wall. And you can read about this in, Ze in Ze Zechariah, the uh, second chapter. And I told you, verse 14, and the city lies four square. The length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with a reed, 12,000 furlongs. The height and the breadth and the height of it are equal. 1,500 miles. To the left, to the right, back, forth, and up. And he measured the wall thereof. 144 and 4 cubits, according to the measure of a man. That is, of the angel, which is 72 yards. 72 yards. The wall. The wall. 72 yards. About the length of a football field. The building of the wall was of jasper and the city was the city was pure gold. See-through gold. Like clear glass. You see that in, in verse 18? That's what real gold looks like. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. All manner. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third cal calvary, the fourth emerald, the fifth sar sardonyx, the, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth burrow, the, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysoprase, chrys I can't, I, I have to take my teeth out to say that one. Chrysoprase, whatever. The eleventh adjacent and the twelfth amethyst. And get this, the twelve, the twelve gates were twelve pearls. And every other gate was just one big old pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold. It wasn't paved with gold. The streets out there are paved. Pure gold. Look at verse 21. Pure, pure gold. What's it look like? As it were transparent glass. <sighs> I didn't see a temple. I'm going to have to go. It's at I will finish this next week. But there was no temple. No temple. 
For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. We, we'll stop right there. We'll come back with you next Sunday. Because we have a few more verses. But I want you, I want you to understand. All of this is free. Every bit of this is free for us. He gave his life for free for us. He has all of this waiting for us. And yet people neglect this great salvation. It's not God's will that any, any man should perish, but that all, A-L-L, -L, all should come to repentance. All. Thank you, Deacon. 1,500 miles is halfway from South Carolina to California. It's just halfway. 1,500 miles. We're talking about the city. One side. Height. Fit. Thank you. And those of you that are not watching this man on at 9.30 Sunday morning, you're missing your blessing, and I'm getting mine. Deacon Edward at 9.30 on Facebook Live. Join him and me, because I'm, I'm there with him. But it's so easy to accept this free offer. It's a gift. It's nothing you have to work for. It's, n it's, it's nothing that you have to do but believe. It's faith. Believe in your heart and confess with the devil your life. Sister Simpson knows what happened as we was praying for her son-in-law to get healed. Salvation came in too. Believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth, you're saved. For with the heart man believes, he believes in salvation. Believes. And with the mouth you confess. That's so simple. He became a curse for us. Wounded for our transgressions. Bruised for our iniqu iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by every stripe, every lash, we are healed of our sin sickness, y'all. Don't try to use that for bodily healing. It's our sin sickness. Will you accept him today? In the free pardon of your sins. You don't have to confess to Robert Brown. You, you can confess to anyone you want to. That, that change, What a wonderful change in my life. I'm going to end with this. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought. Since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy o'er oh, my soul, like a sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy o'er oh, my soul, like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart. Y'all be, be blessed. And I hope to see y'all tomorrow night. We're going to try to go on. And, and I'm going to answer any questions I can. Concerning uh, th this book. That I, hope, that I hope, hope all of you get. Scratching my head with a two-edged sword. And the number. I'm going, I'm going to put it on Facebook. But... Uh, Y'all that can, write this number down. 720-740-9607. I repeat. 720-740-9607. And the access code is 451 Zero five nine six again four five one zero five nine six. I'm going to answer questions concerning the book and 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 any questions you might have. If I don't have the answer tomorrow, I'll have it the week after that because I 
I don't know everything, and 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 I, I'm not going to try to say I do, but 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 would y'all y'all be blessed? And hope to see you tomorrow night at seven, where I'll answer these questions. And Wednesday night, we're still dealing with prayer, and 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 hopefully be back this Friday. We'll continue our study in Genesis. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you.